this is a three-minute talk, and I'm going to go real fast for the first part of it because I think you've already heard most of it. If you have anaerobic digestion, you're going to have ammonia emissions. There's no other way around it. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the digester is 35%. When the digestate leaves the digester, the partial pressure in the atmosphere is really low. CO2 leaves, pH goes up, ammonia shifts from the uh, ionized to unionized forms, and it goes out into the atmosphere. It was large holding ponds from, uh, for digestate, you'd expect to lose a considerable amount of the ammonia nitrogen. Ammonia is potent for a whole variety of reasons, all of which you've heard already in terms of the health impacts, the ozone, uh, ozone uh, stratospheric ozone depletion, n 2 production, etc. <coughs> uh, you haven't heard, nobody's really talked about any great length of the impact of uh, ammonia and hydrogen sulfide on the, on the digester itself. Uh, if a, uh, this happens to be a graph for a, um, a uh, substrate that has 6.5% nitrogen, or a uh, CN ratio of approximately 15. And basically what it, it shows is that depending on the pH of the digester, if you degrade 5% uh, of the, uh, uh, five of the, uh, uh, the solids are degraded, you're going to produce sufficient ammonia that uh, and hydrogen sulfide that may cause um, inhibition within the reactor. Um, Ammonia gas is a regulated gas. Uh, right now, we're producing 150, 140 million tons of uh, ammonia through the Haber-Bosch process. Now, most of that gets excluded in the environment, goes through biogenic uh, conversion to uh, NOx and N2O. Uh, those are the pathways uh, to the generation of a lot of, uh, of uh, constituents that are, are problematic. Uh, control of ammonia emissions in the EUs is uh, required. You can't build a digester without addressing the ammonia issue. Uh, I believe it's required in Chesapeake Bay area now, and it may be required in a number of other localities. <coughs> Anaerobic digestion is, of course, tied to be a uh, you know, energy, renewable energy producer, uh, uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, etc. However, when you look at look at the digesters, they're basically expensive and not particularly profitable. There's a significant source of ammonia emissions, and they produce a, a, an ugly gas. Uh, you know, it contains a lot of CO2, H2S, etc. That can be used for generation of electricity, but not much more. The goals that we had in developing the ammonium bicarbonate process for recovering ammonia from the digester is to improve the economics of anaerobic digestion, to reclaim the ammonia nitrogen as a product economically produce a higher value energy product. In other words, we wanted to produce, produce biogas uh, that could be used as biomethane, that could be used as transportation quality fuel. And we also wanted to remove uh, the uh, ammonia from the uh, digestion. There's a lot of ways of addressing your ammonia uh, issue. You can, you, you can reclaim the ammonia or you can destroy it. Uh, we, Typically, uh, most municipal wastewater treatment plants will opt for destroying it. It costs about uh, as much to destroy the, the ammonia through nitrification, denitrification, or the anamox process uh, as it does to create ammonia. So it's a, it's a, it's a double loss. The reclamation process are required. The ones that are on the market today require the use of, uh, of sulfuric acid, the uh, form of ammonium sulfate, etc. The question is, is uh, sulfuric acid the do uh, you want that on your farm? Now, we work with municipal wastewater treatment plants that don't, wanna, don't even want to deal with uh, chloride <coughs> because of all the paperwork and stuff they're dealing with toxic materials. There's a lot of proven processes to reclaim nitrogen. All of them use uh, some form of uh, um, sulfuric acid um, or, or caustic. Um, one of them, um, some of them generate a sludge. Um, they're all costly. They produce uh, have a cost higher than the value of the of the ammonia uh, uh, produced. When it comes to biomethane production, there's also a lot of other processes out there for cleaning up the biogas. Water scrubbing is one of the favorites. Uh, you go down and, and uh, look at all these processes, and they have a cost of cleaning up uh, the biogas is anywhere from three dollars to five dollars a thousand cubic feet or a million BTU, which is approximately equal to what you can get natural gas for today, which is four dollars a million BTU. Res down as far as two dollars. So there's no profit there either. <coughs> so we, we developed the ammonium um, 
um, LBC nitrogen recovery process that consists of four steps. The first step is to clean up the digestate. Digestate is ugly, turbid material, a lot of dissolved gases. And it had to be cleaned up. The second step was to go through a process to increase the pH uh, of the uh, digestates. So it would shift the ammonium to an ammonia gas form that could be stripped. And the final step was to uh, utilize the stripped ammonia to, uh, in conjunction with the biogas, to produce ammonium bicarbonate and biomethane gas. We had a we used a, a separator. First, it would it was a uh, flotation, a vacuum flotation separator that degassed uh, the digestate and also removed the uh, suspended solids. And it's very, very effective at, at accomplishing both. <laughs> when we looked at ways of increasing the pH, you can increase that with caustic, and you can also increase that by using cyanobacteria that will consume the bicarbonate and thereby increase the pH. Um, the, we done, did a lot of titration tests and uh, uh, in, in to on the um, removing the uh, using sodium hydroxide to increase the pH and it wasn't particularly economical. This is a graph showing the the conversion or the shifting of the uh, ammonium to a ammonia gas that can be stripped. And uh, you know if uh, we use vacuum flotation, that we get a pH of 8.5, and uh, at a reasonable temperature, we could get a shift of uh, about 80 percent to the uh, gaseous form. And if we use a process that, uh, um, that further increased the pH, we can get a, a significant greater uh, shift. Caustic cost uh, costs about 80 cents a pound for caustic, uh, and we ran a lot of titrations. Which is the value of ammonia, so there's no, no real profit there. And that's what ammonia costs today is 70 80 cents a pound. Cyanobacteria consume the bicarbonate. The problem is that uh, cyanobacteria, and ammonia is toxic to cyanobacteria. And growth rate is relatively low, the specific growth rate is. So if you want to do anything with cyanobacteria, you have to have a huge mass of cyanobacteria. But if you have a huge mass of cyanobacteria, you limit light penetration. Um, because it becomes too per turbid. So <clears throat> we developed a, a fixed film. This is good. It operates the other way. Anyway, what we did is we de developed a rotating photobioreactor where we used a fixed film of uh, cyanobacteria. This is actually supposed to be a movie. And uh, if you go to the abstracts, there's a link to a YouTube presentation that shows the movie of this thing actually working. Uh, what it is is, is discs with uh, in which we have a fixed film anaerobic uh, of uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, light is not a problem. We develop a huge biomass of, uh, of uh, cyanobacteria. And you can, as you watch the, the video, you will see that there's a tremendous amount of gas bubbles being generated in this thing. As the liquid moves through, we're, we're converting that, that bicarbonate to oxygen, and you end up with huge oxygen flows. And this, this, this reactor is, is, is fantastic in, in its ability to uh, increase the pH. There's a number of organisms that are growing on the surface of the, uh, of the uh, uh, plates. The first step is to strip the ammonia. Uh, we started this out. We had a, uh, a separate uh, a stripping unit, conventional uh, gas stripping unit. Uh, but then uh, when we found out that in running the uh, rotating photobioreactor that we were producing all kinds of ammonia in our pilot plant and uh, <clears throat> choking everybody out. So we, what we did was we put a fan in there and it, which we blew on the, onto the surface of the, of the photobioreactor and uh, that stripped the ammonia. And so we, we, now we're looking at having a photobioreactor acting as a stripping unit, low pressure air going through it and stripping the gas and then uh, forming the condensate with that. The first step is to precipitate the ammonium bicarbonate uh, and produce biomethane gas. Um, what we do is, uh, first of all, they, they stripped uh, ammonia and, and uh, water vapor that comes with it. We form a, a, a condensate with that. And then with the condensate, we actually uh, treat the biogas with that condensate. Now, the, the condensate has the, the water and the ammonia with it. Uh, we add the CO2 from the biogas and we form a, a ammonium bicarbonate. 
and that's what the ammonium bicarbonate looks like. Uh, we think it's a, a marketable product uh, that we can, uh, because of its uh, pathogen-free and uh, uh, low carbon footprint material, we can sell it. It's a, the fertilizer attributes of the ammonium bicarbonate is commonly used in China, it's not used in the U.S. Urea is the primary, but it has properties similar to urea. Yeah, the uh, nitrogen use efficiency uh, in broadcast or, on, or, or in ground um, is better than uh, uh, manure and is approximately equal to urea. This is a pilot plant at the city of Tacoma uh, wastewater treatment plant. We took their digestate from their belt filter presses, and we also took their biogas. The biogas went in the uh, trailer on the, um, which would be on your right side, and an exit on the left side. You can see one of our sample bottles hanging hanging from the uh, exiting, exiting point. The results were that we were able to get 55% ammonia removal at a, a gas liquid flow rate of about um, 250 and a pH of, uh, of, of 9.25. Temperature was a key issue. Uh, 55 degrees is a relatively low temperature. This, our results matched what our model, model predicted it would be, uh, and we could uh, basically get better results by adjusting the, the pH as well as the temperature. Uh, biomethane, uh, we converted the biomethane up to 97.2%, uh, which is going to be used as transportation quality fuel. The interesting thing about the photobioreactor is that um, we, it's very sensitive amount of light that we put on it. If we, as this graph shows, we got about a 9.25 uh, a, a pH at, uh, with one light. Uh, we increased that to six lights, and we we're up to 10.5. The other astounding thing is how sensitive it was to control. This is a, over a six minute, six minute period of time. We went from four lights to eight lights. And, uh, and you can see at four lights, we were running at uh, uh, 9.4 uh, pH. And uh, with eight lights, we were at 10.12. So that was a rather rapid increase. The average pH over the monitoring period, this is as we move through the process, we go from the influent to the vacuum separators, the rotating photobioreactor to the effluent along the x-axis. And you can see the, as the, uh, what happens is the pH as you go through that process. This is the uh, um, city of Tacoma also took parallel samples with us, and uh, there's nearly our results. Um, the total ammonia nitrogen uh, dropped, came in as average Throughout the period of 445, the city of Tacomas were, were higher. Uh, we ended up at the effluent at 220, and we, our condensate was up to a couple thousand parts per million. This is the similar um, uh, results for the city of Tacoma. Um, they, they came, they, their uh, digestate coming into the process, that was quite a bit higher in terms of average, and their effluent, our effluent was better using their analytical results. Alkalinity increased through the, thing, through the process. The average dissolved oxygen came in at zero, went out at uh, close to 10. And the COD decreased throughout the process. We terminated the power facility, the weather got too cold, and we didn't have insulated tanks. Well, these, this has circles around the influent biogas and the effluent biogas. Initially, we didn't produce any solids. We produced the ammonium by bicarbonate, but we did not produce it as a, as a solid precipitate form but because we had the kinetics all wrong. And subsequent work, we showed that you know after six minutes, we needed six minutes detention time. We could for, that we, the, the, we would form a precipitate. It came, originally, the precipitate started as a kind of liquid condensate, and then and within 15 minutes, it was it ended up in a solid form which is a, basically a marketable form. So uh, sodium hydroxide, what we learned is sodium hydroxide uh, uh, is, is costly. Uh, it ends up in not a very profitable situation. Uh, cyanobacteria worked uh, you know, very favorably, had a favorable cost. Cost was next, next to nothing. You know, it's, uh, we were going through it at gravity flow through this rotating unit that didn't use very much power. And uh, we also had a growing air through it to, to strip it. And that air, you know, uh, the inner power requirements are very low for that. And we effectively control the pH. And we believe that the ammonia removal can be profitable using this technology. 
That's it. Yes. Yeah. Maybe I didn't catch that. How did you, how did you uh, increase the pH? We, we increased the pH by running the liquid uh, through the rotating photobioreactor. And the photo, we, on those plates, we grew cyanobacteria. And cyanobacteria consume the bicarbonate in the, uh, in the liquid. And when the bicarbonate gets consumed, the pH goes up. The bicarbonate system controls the pH of the digestate. If you get rid of the bicarbonate, suck it up, you, you raise the pH. And, and that is also the way the, uh, uh, the ammonium bicarbonate is produced. No, uh, ammonium, ammonium, what we're doing is we're stripping the ammonia out of the digestate. We, we raise the pH that allows us to strip the ammonia. And the ammonia and water vapor, we, when we're stripping ammonia, we're also stripping some water vapor. That material can be cooled down and form a condensate. The condensate, what we do is liquid, we spray that into the biogas flow stream. And when we do that, we form the precipitate, the ammonium bicarbonate, in the solids. And we move the CO2. The ammonium bicarbonate needs the ammonia that, and the water that we're stripping. And it also needs the carbon dioxide that's in the biogas. We mix them two, we take out the carbon dioxide in the biogas, produce a clean methane stream, and we also produce a product that we can sell. Uh, if I remember it right, uh, what data that you that it's about the ammonia removal is about fifty three percent. We achieved fifty three percent. And through this kind of digestion process, uh, as I understand uh, from the eighty process, there has been like not a lot, probably uh, less than one percent of ammonia is produced, right? I mean during. The Depends on your protein content. Most municipal digesters operate at 2,000 milligrams per liter of ammonia. I would say most most uh, animal waste digesters operate between 1,000 and 2,000, somewhere in there. So that's what you're going to expect is an ammonia concentration. And in the rest of the nut, rest of the ammonia, you can still uh, there is except for the, the removal, there is still some ammonia produced. I mean, the effluent still has ammonia in it. Yeah, the effluent, depending on your operating conditions, your effluent will have a couple hundred parts per million. It, you, know, you can move, uh, you can move 50 percent. You can move 80 percent. Depends on your operating conditions. There's three things that control your operating conditions: the pH, the temp, and the temperature. And uh, then there's a gas liquid flow rate. In other words, how much liquid and what's the rate of flow of gas that you have. So those are the three factors that are in control your, your uh, ammonia removal. And uh, when we were operating, we were operating in cold temperatures. We thought we'd be operating in summer, <laughs> actually operating in winter. Uh, and so temp we, couldn't, we couldn't get the temperatures up high enough in our system. We didn't have the, the BTUs. So we operated at 55. If we operated at a higher temperature, at the pHs that we were getting, we would have gotten 80% removal.